Hello everyone, I was at the Cannes Film Festival. It was my first time attending with a three days at Cannes program and I had a pretty fucking crazy time. I want to talk more about that in a future video where I'll talk about every other film I saw there because I saw quite a bit in just 3-4 days. For now I want to talk about one film in particular as I feel it deserves more attention than any other film I saw there and that film is About Dry Grasses. This is the new film by Turkish director Nuri Bilge Ceylan who had previously directed the 2014 Palm Door winner Winter Sleep, as well as one of my personal favorite movies, Once Upon a Time in Anatolia. There's also other great films he's directed, but those two definitely stand out as the most masterful. He's an extremely meticulous director who makes incredibly long movies filled to the brim with philosophical dialogue and arguments, and he's honestly the absolute master of this specific kind of filmmaking. His movies are incredibly authentic, resonant, and poetic in many small and subtle ways. They have absolutely amazing cinematography and are often breathtaking taking, with Winter Sleep in particular being beautiful and the most epic in scope. At 197 minutes, About Dry Grasses is his longest film since Winter Sleep, and I gotta say, not only is the runtime earned, this movie is an absolute masterpiece. I gotta admit, I'm a little speechless and I'm finding it a little difficult after a few stacked days at the festival to properly articulate everything that amazed me about this film. More than any other of Ceylon's films, this is an incredibly intricate character study and the story here is very much secondary to the character development through several lengthy scenes of dialogue and arguments. Needless to say, the experience of this film is pretty exhausting, but it is also deeply immersive and well written, so much so that I didn't really want it to end. The characters in this film are simply so real and relatable that I wanted to spend as much time with them as possible, and the film really satisfies in this regard. The cinematography of this film is also the least showy I've seen of Ceylon in some time. It doesn't really prioritize eye candy and complicated shots, so much as it's constantly trying to evoke this sense of gloomy desolation through the landscape. But there's also a really resonant sense of childhood nostalgia here. The main character of this film is a teacher of 6th graders who wants to leave the village he's currently teaching at, but he fears he will never escape this place. The entire film takes place in the winter, and over its 3 hours we really start to empathize with the main character's perspective of this place, and we feel it as well, whether we like it or not. This place feels stagnant and repetitive, and yet it never really bores us. The snowy village here reveals so much about the souls of all of its characters. Its sense of isolation only gets stronger as it continues, until we, just like our main character, become accustomed to this place, and at that point we aren't sure if we even want to leave this place anymore, but we know we have to. The main character of this film is one of the most complex, real and human I've ever encountered in a work of fiction, almost reminding me of the deep sadness and complexity of the lead of a Charlie Kaufman film. Our main character is kind of a gigantic fucking asshole, exhibiting many incredibly toxic masculine traits. From the moment we meet him, there's a strange aura to this actor's face, as if we're not really sure if he could follow this person around for an entire film. And yet, for all of his hateability, he is also deeply lovable and relatable. For the whole film, we constantly fluctuate from being in love with this man to being scared and even just repulsed by his abrasiveness, which is exactly how many of the characters in the film are feeling. But it's this fluctuating nature of the character that only brings us closer to him, makes us see him for all that he is and that way we are able to look deep into ourselves at the same time. See ourselves for all that we are, flaws and all. This experience is one that is completely transcendental and honestly life-changing. The quality of this performance can be attributed to the quality of the character in his insane screenplay, but I genuinely think Denise Chililolu gave the best performance of this year. And I don't think I'll be seeing a better one, as a character with this much mystery, complexity and humanity is incredibly rare to find, even in great films. I also managed to meet this actor at Cannes and got to tell him how much I adored this film and his performance in it. He seemed like an absolute sweetheart. The actress Merve Dizdar wound up winning the awards for Best Actress at Cannes and yeah, sure, she gave the second best performance I've seen this year. There's a scene between these two characters that I feel confident in calling one of the best dialogue scenes in film history. I cannot imagine a single person not being impressed by this scene. As amazing as this film is, I am a bit worried it won't quite find its audience and will be largely ignored. So I hope I can make somewhat of a difference in that. Many critics at Cannes wound up skipping this one and many publications are not even talking about it. The big issue with this film is not so much its length, 
so much that most of it is dialogue. And the dialogue is not always philosophical, as much of it is also just very repetitive and never ending. This movie requires a lot of patience, and although I was never uninterested because of the fantastic cinematography, editing and writing in the scenes, I did at points lose my focus. But even then I feel I kinda loved that, and that it added to the experience. At a certain key scene, I wasn't quite able to follow the dialogue anymore, but we got to see a standout performance from an actor who only appears in the film for a few scenes. And this small performance continues to resonate strongly with me, even as I couldn't quite catch the dialogue. There's something hypnotic and soothing about this constant talking combined with amazing performances that really makes this film unique and incredible. This movie is a true lifesaver. It touched on subjects that have been on my mind for a long time, and expressed all of them perfectly. The experience is not something that can be described as it is something spiritual in a way, with the ending making me feel a way I haven't felt since André Rubioff. Only here there's also a lingering, unsettling nature to it all that is deeply haunting and leaves you behind with mixed feelings. This is a very human film that captures everything about the human experience, warts and all, leading to an experience that is moving on a whole other level. The emotions this film elicits are complex and challenging long after the film is over, and it carries a somewhat depressing tone all throughout it, but there is also so much joy and love to be felt here. I am truly overwhelmed by this film, and I cannot wait to see it again. Regardless of what you think of this film, it is not an experience that can be forgotten, and its dialogue will be remembered for ages as some of the most eloquent in film history in regards to how it manages to sum up our society and our entire history as a human race. I believe this to be one of the greatest films ever made, and I have nothing but praise for it. It should go without saying that this is also my favorite film by Nuri Bilya Ceylan, and that he has truly cemented himself as not only one of the greatest filmmakers of all time, but also one of the truly great poets of our time. And I am giving this one a 10 out of 10.